If Latinos sit out the election, instead of saying we're going to punish our enemies and we're going to reward our friends who stand with us on issues that are important to us, if they don't see that kind of upsurge in voting in this election, then I think it's going to be harder. And that's why I think it's so important that people focus on voting on November 2nd. We don't mind the Republicans joining us. They can go come for the ride, but they've got to sit in back. Well, an interview on a Latino radio station and a speech uh, to Democrats, President Obama, with some pointed words for Republicans. This after a National Journal interview in which he said this, quote, It's going to be important for Democrats to have a proper and appropriate sense of humility about what we can accomplish in the absence of Republican cooperation. Continuing, I think it's possible for us to be more deliberate, to spend more time building consensus. So what about the two messages as we close in on the election? We're back with the panel. Uh, Charles? I think this is how the great post-partisan, post-racial promise of Obama ends. Not with a bang or a whimper, but with a display of unbelievable presidential smallness. He isn't only urging Hispanics to punish enemies. He's criticizing Hispanics who don't. Uh, you know, and this is the man who told us, this is what propelled him into the spotlight of the country, we're not a blue America, we're not a red America, we're not a black America, Hispanic America. And now he tells us, uh, on the eve of an election, we actually are Hispanic American, Anglo American. We aren't only separate, but in a sense, we are enemies. I don't even th th think he uses the word enemy in describing the president of, of Iran or, or Hugo Chavez, but he used it against Anglos who believe in the Arizona law. Good the grief. I mean, this really is something that... I mean, People who believed in him in 08, I think, believed a lot against all evidence. I mean, this really is a man who sat in the, in the pew of Jeremiah Wright for 20 years. Some of us are suspected was not exactly the man who hovered above it all and would bring us all together the way he promised. And I think this display, even though it's pre-election, you can write it off as an as a, um, extreme, I think this really is the authentic Obama, and I think it's really disappointing. I asked uh, Democratic National Committee Chairman Tim Kaine about this uh, very sentence about punishing enemies in that uh, Latino radio uh, interview. I asked him about it in a series, a couple of pieces we're doing called Closing Arguments later this week, but take a listen. You can't, before the election, say, hey, thanks, guys. I'm glad that 100% of you were voting to block small business loans. You know, you're, you're not, you, you have to draw that contrast. You get out of the immediate election bubble. Um, hopefully people will go back a little bit to, okay, campaigns are over for now, let's focus on solving problems. So essentially, A.B., that the National Journal article was outside the immediate election bubble, on the stump, the president is seven days from an election, I guess. I think he saves some comments for interviews um, with the media and other comments for rallies where he's trying to energize the base. The only people left to move are partisan Democrats who can't stand Republicans and are uh, are moved by criticisms of the other party. They might be disappointed in the Obama agenda, they might feel that he failed to deliver the change that they hoped for, but there's a, still a few of them he can get out to the polls and that's what he's doing. Um, there'll be plenty of time and we know he'll turn around and you know offer the olive branch and work with uh, Republicans. You believe once, that? I, I would think once they're in the majority and he's running and he's a candidate for election in 2012, he's going to run to the center and try to be their best friend again and then to show the public when they don't work with him and they don't show up at the meeting, I tried, I had a cocktail party, I did the best I could. What's interesting, though, is, is, this, is the narrative he's setting up. He has scolded Democrats to say, if you don't show up, you'll get, you know, you'll reap what you sow. And if you, if you don't, if you don't vote Latinos, you'll never get immigration reform. And at the same time, he's also, you know, set up a narrative about the outside groups and the shadowy groups and the secret money. And so it really is, it's been forming for weeks. And that is the post-election message that the Democrats, the election was bought by secret money from the outside for uh, conservative candidates and the Democrats lost control. And then those, you know, lame Democrats who decided not to vote also sunk the ship. Um, and, and, and I don't know how, I don't know how he, he, he threads the needle, but I expect him fully to, to be humble and reach across the aisle guy. I, 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 don't, I don't really buy a lot of that. I agree with you that it's ramped up because it's seven days before the election and all the rest, but you know, not wanting to sound like an NPR executive, I think the person who really needs to consult their publicist or their psychiatrist is Obama. <laughs> because we can find, in, uh, look, the, the, the New York Times Magazine interview, which is one of these you know, sedate, thoughtful kind of interviews, he does the same sort of stuff. We, you know, I spent all of my time concentrating 
on getting the policies right. We didn't spend any time on, on uh, public relations when he gave literally hundreds of speeches, press conferences. He was out there all of the time. They're putting out, out Obama out there all the time. Um, and we know that he wasn't ever, you know, if he ever believed the stuff that Charles was referring to about the postpartisanship stuff, why did it take him 18 months to invite Mitch McConnell to have a meeting with him in the Oval Office? Speaking of Mitch McConnell, last word, Charles. Also in the National Journal, uh, McConnell is quoted as saying, the single most important thing we want to achieve is for President Obama to be a one-term president. Democrats are hopping all over that, saying that shows you a post-election partisan bickering continuing. No, it's realism. He understands that without control of the White House, Republicans are not going to change anything. They're not going to repeal Obamacare. And after losing on November the 2nd, Obama's not going to accomplish anything of importance because his mandate is run out. He either gets a renewal of the mandate in 2012 or not. And that's why it's so important. That's going to determine the, the future of our country, whether he gets a second a shot at liberalism or not. That is it for the panel, but stay tuned for the backstory on a big story.